story that all of us here in India should be paying closer attention to, and that is a day after Iran launched strikes against Pakistan targeting the terror group, the Jaysh al Adal in Balochistan, Pakistan has now claimed that it has hit back. Today, the Pakistan Foreign Ministry put out a statement saying that they carried out uh, coordinated military strikes against terror hideouts in the border between uh, Balochistan and Iran. The Pakistani claim is that a number of terrorists were killed in that operation. The Pakistani government has said that despite giving several dossiers to Iran, no action has been taken on these groups that, uh, that are operating from Iran and targeting Pakistani assets uh, and Pakistani interests. Now, amid the rising tensions, Iran has defended its military operation, its operation saying that it has every right to defend itself. Any country has the right to defend itself. And reacting to these tensions between the two countries, India's External Affairs Ministry uh, has said that Iran's actions are that of self-defense. They are justified. And whatever is happening between Iran and Pakistan is a matter bilaterally between the two of them. So, we will try and make sense of what these tensions mean in a regional context because you now have a situation where Pakistan is being encircled by three of its neighbors who have made the same accusation against uh, Pakistan. That is, it uses terror groups to target its neighbors. It was India first, then Afghanistan, and now Iran as well. Let me go across to uh, two very special guests who are uh, joining us, Sushant Sareen and uh, Major uh, Janjua from Pakistan for an analysis, a perspective on what this means and whether or not this could potentially open up yet another front in the ongoing Middle East war. All right, so how does one make sense of this story and in which direction is it headed? Is it going to be more escalatory? There are going to be more strikes and counter strikes between Iran and Pakistan or will there be a de-escalation? Sushant Sareen is senior fellow with the Observer Research Foundation, major retired Yasser Janjua, security analyst joining us from Pakistan. Sushant, so yesterday you had Iran claiming that it's hit targets deep inside Pakistan. Today, Pakistan has said that it has hit targets deep inside Iran. Do you see this settling here or will neither country be able to climb off this escalation ladder and do you see this getting uh, protracted into a, a long drawn out battle? Zaka, we will have to wait and watch uh, how this plays out. Uh, I don't think either country really wants to go up the escalation ladder but then the question arises whether uh, they can afford to back down uh, and if for example the Iranians back down right now then what would they have achieved? Uh, so I think there will be a dilemma for the Iranians because if Iran backs down at this stage and does not do anything more, uh, then Iran will to an extent have left itself open to other players in the region who have so far been taking the hits from Iran without retaliating, uh, who will now feel that you know the only way to force some <coughs> kind of compelence and compliance on Iran uh, would be to hit uh, out at Iran itself, uh, which has not happened so far, uh, except for the case of Pakistan. So there will be that dilemma for the Iranians. Uh, and, and if they hit back, then of course you go up the escalation ladder. Similarly, I don't think the Pakistanis would want to go up the escalation ladder because uh, that would open up a fourth front. They are already yeah. fighting on three fronts. There is the India front, there is the Islamist front with Afghanistan, there is the Imran Khan front. And now you have the Iranian front. I don't think the Pakistanis would want a fourth front to open up. So ideally, they would want that, you know, okay, fine, we've done a tit for tat. Let's break off out here. But we'll have to see what exactly their calculations are uh, to see. Because wars often happen not out of rationality, but out of irrationality. Correct. So we'll have to wait and see whether uh, what form of rationality or irrationality prevails. So, Major Yasser Janjua, you know, the problem for Pakistan is that on all three sides, uh, it is being hit by neighbors who have accused it for a number of years of using terrorism from its soil, but to no avail, uh, whether it is India on the east, whether it is now Iran on the west or Afghanistan on the north. Uh, and all three of them can't be wrong, that at some point, Pakistan has to uh, have this assessment of use of terror and terrorist groups, whether it's uh, Jaysh-e Mohammed or lashkar e taiba on the east, or this Jaysh al adal which the Iranians are accusing it of uh, subversive activity on Iranian soil, Pakistan has to make that calculation that it's not worth paying the price for 
and being beset on all three sides by adversarial neighbors who now have indicated and shown that uh, this whole nuclear bluff can be called out. You can hit deep inside Pakistan where they believe their security <clears throat> interests are compromised. Okay. Uh, I, you, you are entitled to your point of opinion and I, your point of view and I am not going to sit here and try and change it. However, I have a responsibility to tell you the facts. The facts are that we have been telling the Iranians for a very long time. Iran is a brotherly country. We have very good relations. Despite the fact that you know, as of today or as of yesterday, when all this started happening, there was a joint exercise, military exercise going on between the Pakistanis and the Iranians. There was an Iranian delegation in Islamabad. There were uh, representatives from Pakistan in Jabahar uh, meeting the Iranians. And two hours before the strike, Pakistani Prime Minister was meeting the Iranian foreign minister in Davos. So we have been telling this, uh, why I've so, as told you is that we otherwise have very good relations with Iran. No, but we doesn't that Iran, make it even more uh, piquant, uh, Mr. Yeah. Janjua, because oh, okay. the uh, Pakistan uh, Prime Minister, I, I, the caretaker Prime Minister was meeting the uh, Iranian uh, leader in Davos. And two hours right. later, they are right. hitting what you I, 60 kilometers inside your territory. Right. Right. And what they did was, two hours later, what they did was they killed two innocent boys and injured two girls, innocent girls, right? We have been telling them that Balochistan Liberation Army and Balochistan Liberation Front have been hiding in Sistan, Balochistan area of Iran, which is an ungoverned area. Tehran does not have full autonomy over or full control over the area where these uh, criminals or dissidents have been hiding inside Iran. We have given them accurate information in the past. We have given them the dossiers. Yet the Iranian government has probably been uh, not able to control them or there's lack of... Uh, but, but, uh, uh, Jenny, you are, you are, no, you're not answering the basic question that I asked you, that on all three sides, on the east with India, well, on the west with Iran, on the north with yeah. Afghanistan, so, you are completely being beset by neighbors who have made the same accusation. Now, not all of them no. can be wrong. Or no, there is some truth no, to those accusations. To this, this is I'm trying to answer. That in case of Iran and Pakistan, we'll go step by step and all three neighbors, we can discuss threadbare. In case of Iran and Pakistan, it is the other way what you're saying. It is Pakistan which, which is affected by BLA and BLF activities okay. being staged from Iran. In case of Afghanistan, Afghanistan actually, the, the, there is cross-border terrorism uh, being leashed into Pakistan by uh, the tariq -e taliban Pakistan dissidents sitting inside Afghanistan. Okay. And Pakistan has been saying that to the Afghanis. Pakistan has not gone out inside so, Afghanistan and uh, you know, lodged terrorists. Who are terrorist. the Jaish and, and Ladal, who are the Haqqanis, who are the Jaish and the Lashkar. Anyway, we won't get into all of that because those, those must be you know noble folks doing noble work. But Sushant Sareen, you know, the problem for Pakistan is one, like I said, all three neighbors on the north, east and west have made the same accusations and ha have now demonstrated that they can hit inside Pakistani territory. The bigger problem is internal. Right now you have a caretake, a caretaker, almost lame duck kind of a government. Uh, the incoming prime minister, whoever he or she may be, will have to deal with this issue. And you have an ex a, a former prime minister who's in jail and who's also breathing down the neck of the army. So. It's not just the external pressures, there's internal pressures as well. That's right. So uh, externally, Zaka, if you look at it, Pakistan has three official neighbors. China is technically not their neighbor, uh, you know, in the sense that China becomes their neighbor because of Pakistan occupied Kashmir. But otherwise, officially, they have three neighbors. They don't have full diplomatic relations with all three, not with India, not yeah. with Afghanistan and not, not with Iran. And yet, they want geoeconomics and they want all kinds of other stuff. So I don't know how that's going to work out for them. Number one. Number two, you have to agree. Uh, and I think Major Janjua is not being entirely truthful when he only puts the blame on the Iranians. The bottom line is that the entire border region between Iran and Pakistan is an ungoverned space on both sides to some extent. Uh, because if you look at what the Iranians have been doing, the Iranians have actually been making forays into Pakistani territory even earlier. There's been shelling, there's been raids inside Pakistani territory. They've managed to cover it up, but this time around, it's kind of escalated to a point where there have been counter-retaliation. So, it's a new situation in, in that sense. Yeah. Internally, again, and it's a new situation partly because of internal dynamics in both the countries. In Pakistan, for example, you have an army 
which is like a marauding force which has taken control over the country which is holding a sham election which has put the most important and the most popular political leader in jail dismantled this party and yet not allowing a completely free and fair election to take place the army is becoming unpopular there are many people rising up against the army protests breaking out in every nook and corner all kinds of things are happening now at this stage if the army said that okay fine we'll take this on the chin we will not retaliate because we don't want to open a fourth yeah. front yeah what would happen to the army's reputation the reputational damage that the army which is already being lampooned which is already being made fun of which is being mocked on social media and that's really hurting them because that's why they want to clamp down on social media and put people in jail for 10 years if you say anything against the army as though it's some kind of a holy cow in pakistan mm. uh, at a time like that for them to not be seen to be responding means you know basically their political position is gone their Absolutely. Their the standing of... their reputation it's a big question mark no doubt about it but uh, Jan, uh, major jandua you know uh, just take on what sushant is saying you know on, on the afghanistan border for the last god knows 20 years now the army has not been able to cle clean out the tehreek e taliban pakistan you're repeatedly facing attacks uh, in the, in the northern border uh vis-a-vis -vis india india is hit in balakot uh, you know in the aftermath of uh, uri india is hit so again that you can say okay that was some time ago but now again iran is hitting you and then to add to all of this the army every single day imran khan and his supporters are making straight up accusations against the army and there seems to be no way that the army is able to shut down the pti or pti supporters or even you know right. uh, bring down mr I, imran khan's popularity by a notch i i have heard you uh, uh what sushant was saying in his first uh, reply and the second reply i agree to most of it his analysis is always spot on and i like to listen to him but the mere fact is what he's saying right i just have to add certain things when he says there are ungoverned areas on both sides of iran and pakistan border i agree but how many times can you demonstrate or the iranians demonstrate or you bring me a documentary evidence when iranians have come back and said to us look this is the list of people we want you to give to us or take care of they have not we have demonstrated that we have people on their side that we want back and iranians have not acted now the fact is that's that's part of iran so shant you are entitled to your opinion i know you're not agreeing to me uh, now coming over to the army and pti stuff for example before we go into there we have made it very clear in the last few years you don't like it that's your choice india did it in balakot you you cut down some trees and killed some crows we told you unfortunately you may not like it sitting on your chain we told you that we will time we'll choose a time of our choosing and within 24 hours we struck back we downed your plane iran did it they tried to mistake us or there are our armed forces because we are involved in elections and there is so much going on and there is so called as per sushant statement there is anti army sentiment pakistan's armed forces are fully capable and they have responded okay. within less than 48 hours and told the iranians we, we, and we have we have taken down we nine have people to, we have to wrap it up iranian that government, because i'm i'm completely out iranian of time government has i'd like to remind the good government. gentleman the major from pakistan there was a gentleman named abdul rahman uh, abdul malik uh, digi who was killed in 2010 he was the head of a group called jundulla and everybody knows and i'm sure the major knows does uh, sura sushant what jundulla was uh, and what it is now metamorphosized into but we will leave it at that uh, thank you very much to both our guests we'll see how the story plays out between iran and pakistan uh, as sushant said right now it's difficult to say whether this will further escalate but it seems like at least for the moment temporarily better sense might prevail on both sides that's a wrap thanks very much for tuning in i'll catch you again tomorrow night